For more on this story, let's cross live now to Barcelona, where we're joined by Oriol Amoros, who's a member of the Catalan government. Mr. Amoros, how are you planning to move forward now? Has the dream of an independent Catalonia just uh, faded away? I'm sure we will win in our proposals and we will be independent. And I, I can't precise where exactly, but we are sure we will win because uh, Mariano Rajoy's government is doing everything in a, in, a, in a way that the majority of the Catalans cannot understand. And you have to know that all we are, all what is happening now in Catalonia has started on, on 2010 when uh, small groups of the Constitutional Court, which is directly elected by the um, uh, Socialist Party and Popular Party rejected the Catalan ruling law that it was voted by a majority of population. And now they are doing worse. So if seven years ago that decision that in fact was a coup d'etat uh, has taken us to the present situation, the decision that may, they made yesterday, what was really harder, is going to impulse our desire to be a free. To be free and to uh, to be a um, a free country. You're saying that a majority of people in Catalonia uh, want independence, yeah. but only 40 percent of the residents of the region actually voted in the independence referendum you organized. How do you explain that? Yeah. And is there really a silent majority who actually wants to remain part of Spain? Well, in, in every referendum and in every votation, uh, you have to hear the, those who goes to, to the polls, the stations. And we know that the pro-unity of Spain uh, wanted to not participate on this referendum. But in, in spite of this fact, 38.4% of the whole census going to vote pro-independence. Let's see other referendums. For example, the Brexit one in United Kingdom, only 37 0.4% of uh, the whole census going to, to support the Brexit. So pro-independence are 38.4, pro-Brexit in Britain are 37.4. I'm, re I'm referring to the whole census, okay? So it's, it's really a huge amount of people. If, um, if all people who has not not going to vote uh, was um, against independence, uh, we also win till a participation of 80 percent. So that is very clear, and you know because in your television you have explained it very well that the uh, first October was a very difficult referendum where people wanting to vote and where to vote in a very difficult situation. Indeed, we all saw uh, a harsh reaction from the police in the streets of Barcelona on that. Uh October 1st. But let me ask you, uh, what is Mr. Pujamon um, ab about to do now? What are his options? Well, we have the option of declaring independence and then resist. Is he likely to do that? The Catalan Republic. We want to do this, but we want to do giving all the options to dialogue. So Pujamon is insisting and she's persisting on the position. To, to give an option to the dialogue, to ask the international actors to put more pressure on all the actors on this table and to sit in a table and to have the way to, to uh, just listen to people. So we will be agree with any solution that has the support of the population, of any solution that can be voted. We, uh, and of course, the, the, the possibility to be independent has to be voted. We will be uh, agreed to decide it. They said Catalan referendum is not enough. Okay, we can do uh, an, 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 another referendum with normal in uh, normal conditions. So we are uh, we have a mandate from 1st October. We have a mandate from the last elections. You have to know that the last elections of the Catalan government were with the most turnout ever in our history. Around 80% people wanted to vote. So. The, the present government is the government with more leg legitim legitimation, more legitimate in, in votes. So um, we have the, a democratic mandate to be independent, but we always are insisting to give a chance to a dialogue. A chance for dialogue. Thank you very much for joining us from Barcelona, Mr. Oriol Amoros, a member of the Catalonian government.